Buddy Alert Wolf here to bring you another anime review, and this time I'm gonna do it of uh, it'll be a Blast of Tempest episode 20, and I believe this one is called Who Done It. Now, all right, so this episode was pretty pretty badass because of its ending, which I'll get to obviously at the end. But uh, basically, uh, the whole point per point to this episode, the purpose behind it. Is Hagase needs to return to the past to figure, to figure out who killed Aika or Aika. Yeah, Aika. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, Aika. Anyway, who killed her? And to give it some sort of meaning. Now, the the suspects are the Mage of Exodus. This, this, this. Whoever that may be. Um. Uh, it could be the princess herself. She could time travel back and just end up killing this bitch. And her reasons for killing her may be A, out of jealousy over, uh, Yoshino. B, just because if she was gonna die a meaningless death, she may kill her herself so it has meaning. Or, she will try to save Aika. Uh, because of Yoshino and Mahiro, even though she's not supposed to. So... And then, and then, uh, while they're discussing the different fates, uh, uh, I thought it was cool, if, you know, well, actually, I'll get into that in a second. So, they gather up all the parts, uh, they gather up all the parts of the barrel, uh, they gather up the doll, and they, she explains that she's gonna time travel using it, using the same method as before, she, she sacrifices a missile, and the purpose of this is, so that, she could um, figure again, figure out who the killer is and what's going on. Um, so she uses the spell to return back to the past, turning herself back into bones in the present, and she reappears in her own body where she left it back when she turned herself into sand. She finds because she now she knows where the uh, where the sacrifice was that. Uh, Samoan left her, because remember, uh, last time she used a missile that just happened to land her way, you know? But this time, she, she uses this big super gun bazooka-looking thing, it looks awesome. She sacrifices it, and it gives her the ability to run real fast. Now, she has about a month before the killing to figure out what happens. Now, she says she's going to turn off communication on the doll. She doesn't want to alert anybody to what's going on, and she feels like it could cause her any problems. So... Against Samon's uh, judgment, she does it. Or Samon's judgment, she does it. So, then, we do get some discussion uh, as they're collecting her skeleton of what are you going to do if it turns out that it was the princess who killed her. And the hero's like, I'm going to kill her. And Yoshino's like, I'm not going to let you kill her. There's been enough death. And they're just quietly doing this. And then, and then Evangeline's like, but what if it turns out, Yoshino, that you're the mage of Exodus? who has something like a split personality and you're repressing the memory or something. What if you turn out to be the killer? Because the, it's the first time to directly accuse him of being the Mage of Exodus' heart. And, uh... Mahiro's like, well, I guess I'd have to kill him. <laughs> and Yoshino's like, yeah, I guess that'd be something, huh? <laughs> In other words, like, yeah, you know, on that note, yeah, I'm pretty... If you could kill me, Mahiro, I'd say go for it. Alright, now... It's funny, this episode summary is not going to be much. Not, even though that she time travels, really not much happens in the episode. Uh, so she does time travel back, like I said, and, and then she uses the, the sacrifice to run off over the water. You, you don't even see it, but you know that's what's going on. Meanwhile, people are worried. Evangeline's boss is saying that, you know, he actually likes the rule of Genesis. Because it's brought peace to the world, uh, even though he deplores the methods. Well, he's an end justified to me, this guy. That's what he is. And they even talked about it in the previous episode. Uh, then you have uh, the Mage of Exodus in, in, uh, in the present. He's uh, he's getting pretty badass at it. You know, he's finally able to beat June. 
Uh, and so that he's getting better as a warrior. So now we time travel back. Uh, she, now we're back to her time period. Uh, and she gets into Japan, into the town she's supposed to be in. And the first person she runs into is Aika. And I, and it scared the shit out of her, you know? It's like, oh man, what you doing right here, right now? Does she know? No, no, she doesn't know. She doesn't know. And when they walk by each other, and it's a pretty cool moment in the anime. You got to see it like that. She's like, uh, Aika's like, hey, why were you staring at me? She's like, oh, I was staring at the food you were eating. Where do you get, where can you get it? And she's like, oh, it's down the block. She's like, oh, okay. And then she ducks the corner, uses a can, jumps onto the roof. And then it's like, wow, so that was her, you know, uh, she talks about using magic to get up on there, and she's like, you know, they said she had a bad personality, but I, I don't know, it might be hard to handle. And she's like, who, they said, and then the next thing you know, Ike is on the roof, and she's like, they said, and then she uses her cool detective skills, and she's like, that would only mean, the only people who, who describe me with a bad personality is Yoshino Mahiro, and, uh, but Hero doesn't know I'm dating you, you know. So this is all interesting. And you said in the past tense, girlfriend. Hmm, I wonder what this is. But I, through logic and deduction, I guess you're the most powerful mage of uh, Genesis, of the Tree of Genesis. She's like logic. It's not logical to jump to the I'm the Princess of Genesis, but yet yeah, uh, I'm a mage of Genesis. And she's like, yeah, but I am the Princess of Genesis. All right, now. This is the part. This is the end of the episode. This is the good part. This is what's going to raise this episode from like a eh, two and a half, three to a four. And in my opinion. And this is when she reveals that she's what you might call the Mage of Exodus. Now, I have been saying all along for how many review now, guys, that Aika was the Mage of Exodus. I knew she was the, well, as soon as I heard the phrase Major Exodus, I knew it was Aika. You know what I mean? That That's how long I've been saying that she's the Major Exodus. And I've been saying, even before that, I I was the one who said, I think she may have killed herself or had herself killed. And she she knew about future events somehow. And and she planned all this for a positive outcome. I said this when they were at, when the tr two trees were fighting. Uh, before the, uh, you know, the, before the, the half-season break there, or the season two, between one and two. So, I had guessed all this before. Now we're getting to a point where she's like, yeah, I might what you call the major exodus. She turns a toothpick into a giant, flaming, badass sword, and the princess is like, you're the true major exodus with the heart of exodus. And there's a scene there. Now, I've taken that scene, I'm using that as my thumbnail. It is, uh, it is gonna be... It, Woo! That's a badass picture of that girl right there. And then these bitches have a lot to fight about. Excuse my French there. But they do, because they both love Yoshino. And that's why I keep saying, man, uh, Mage of Leviticus is Yoshino, able to do Zeus, both Genesis, and Exodus bitches. Because that mofo is a pimp. Imagine that, the only two chicks that have ever liked you, ever loved you, are the two most powerful bitches on the planet. Yeah, that's all I'm saying, man. Super sperm or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, but all kidding aside about my boy Yoshino uh, and his Mac Lake skills. Uh, it's pretty badass. The next episode is called uh, Femme Fatale, Woman of Fate. Well, I don't know why they, uh, I guess they subtitled it, but Femme Fatale. And uh, they, they show the two princesses fighting. And that's pretty cool. And I will say this, she looks dumb, dumb powerful. Like, I've never seen anybody just make a sword appear like that, you know what I mean? Like, I I, I didn't, like she just pulled some Edward, Edward Elric's transmutation. She just pulled a sword out of her ass. Like, she did some alchemy shit right there, like full metal style. You know, she didn't even need a transmutation circle. I think she knows the truth. Actually, she said she's a mage of power and truth, so there you go. <laughs> um, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Super excited about it. Um, this episode, again, this episode would be a low ranking if not for the ending. Just for the ending, I'm giving it a four. I'm just saying. I think this series has been a four in the category of a four. But, uh, again, I absolutely love it. 
so who's the, again who's the villain is she the villain who's been dead the whole time who knows i still say i love the fact that this is a story with no villain um and and that's pretty cool i i cannot wait to see the cat fight in the next episode um so that's enough out of me and enough out of this episode honestly it's all about them meeting at the end um so click it up if you like it comment if you must and please 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 subscribe if you can and this is alert wolf signing out <laughs>